Hello! Welcome to the North American Systemic Constellations Conference videos and interviews of our speakers for our conference coming up October 5th to 8th in Virginia Beach. Uh, my name is Linda Como and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Sarah Payton. Welcome Sarah. Good morning Linda. Uh, I want to mention Sarah's talk sounds so interesting. Using neuroscience in constellations to resolve blocks to self-love and self-care. Mm, it's my deepest interest. Oh, I am so excited, Sarah. I'm so excited. But before we start talking about your workshop, may I ask you, how do you describe constellations to a complete stranger at a cocktail party? Mm. Oh, what a wonderful question. When I'm talking about constellations, I, I love to t I'm a person who loves the brain. So I write about the brain, and I think about the brain, and I bring the brain into constellations. And I do even do constellations where uh, people choose somebody to represent different parts of their brain or different parts of their nervous system as a part of the constellation work. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of yeah, gives people like a, um, a platform to stand on to kind of look at themselves and go, oh, Look at that, I'm human. I, I make sense. My, my experiences make sense. My struggles make sense. Uh, and so I would usually begin by talking about the brain. And then I would say, and, um, and so we take an issue, something that you would like to experience differently in your life, and we talk about it for a little bit. And then we invite you to choose uh, from the people that are there, to choose the people who seem like they would do the best job representing different aspects of your question. So if your question is about your relationship with your mother, you'd choose somebody to represent your mother. If your relationship question is about an inner dialogue or uh, a, a longing to be able to turn towards yourself with warmth, then you'd choose somebody to be the part that that doesn't turn towards you with warmth and the part that longs for warmth. What is this relationship? There's something about constellation work that lets us move into the fractals of being human. It lets us take a look at the large and the small patterns and see the ways in which our attachment relationships affect our present day intimacy or allow us to see how old buried family patterns um, affect us. So it's a uh, modality that permits deep exploration and a kind of uh, uh, accessing of group wisdom. Mm, lovely. Thank you for that. And that leads beautifully into, of course, the, your talk about self-love and self-care. Yeah. Tell us, I, as I was reading this, I was super um, focused on two things. Um, that you can acknowledge the signs of the blocks. Can you tell us a few signs? Sure. Um, well, when you ask somebody you, to put a representative for themselves up in a constellation, and then you say, please tell me, how do you feel about yourself? You know, I mean, what's that? Is there warmth? That's always my question, because in larger constellation work, we're often thinking about the flow of love from generation to generation. And so uh, the, then uh, is the flow of love reaching the seeker? Is, this, is the seeker aware that support is possible? Is the seeker, really I think often it's a question of willingness because the hidden loyalties that we work with so often in constellations prevent people from, from turning towards themselves with warmth, almost like they would be saying, um, uh, I will not like myself because, Mother, you were not able to like yourself, and I will not leave you alone. These kinds of things are the blocks. So signs of the blocks are um, harshness with the self, um, bewilderment when we ask uh, the seeker how do they feel about themselves, if they've got a representative in the field, uh, neutrality, actually is also a sign of a block well i don't you know just like i don't even know that person so these are these are some different kinds of things that we run into 
Oh, that's fantastic. So um, let me give you the floor and uh, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more um, mm -hmm. how you would describe your workshop. Sure, sure. Well, um, since my in deep interest is both what ha is what happens when we look at the brain? How does it change us to learn about our own brains and begin to have affection for them? How do we, uh, when we're working with seekers, what kinds of things can we keep in mind that let us understand where entanglements might be happening that prevent self-connection? Um, I, I've just been doing this work in, in, uh, in deep exploratory detail in the last couple of weeks. Um, and the, the range of things that, pre that prevents people from being able to turn toward themselves um, ranges from very clear classical constellation entanglements with grandparents or with... Um, uh, uh, I was working with, with one woman whose grandfather was deported and then he died early in the, in the, early in the 20th century. And her block to, to her self-warmth was that she was so committed to him and so deeply loyal to him and so angry about his needless death that she, that she, that she had no extra energy to be able to turn toward herself. So that was a very classical piece of constellation work. But others that have been less classical were, for example, I was working with a woman who experienced some drug addiction and, um, and didn't want to turn fully toward the self because um, if she turned fully toward herself, she was worried that the drug addiction would come back. So, uh, so there's a, a way that we'll kind of, just like families take parts and put them outside the family system, exclude them in order to hopefully make the family work better. We take parts of ourselves and put them outside of our own internal system in the hopes that we will work better. So how do we, you know, figure out which playing field we're in, in a way, is one of the questions that I'm so interested in. And, and what do constellations show us? They are magical unfoldings. Yes, yes. Another point uh, that caught my eye was the purpose of shame. Oh, yeah. I have been lecturing about and thinking about and wondering about and exploring and doing workshops on shame for a number of years. And the way that it's deepening in for me is, um, feels really radical. And that is to ask the question, when you feel shame, how are you alone? How are you unaccompanied? For example, if we have body shame, as I do, um, if I ask myself, how am I alone with my body in this moment? What would it be like to imagine myself surrounded by friends who love my body? What would that be like to, to be experiencing my body being held with affection and warmth? It's, it's a radical challenge to our North American um, isolationism <laughs> and, and sort of alienation to begin to wonder this question. Um, uh, how it, when I have a shameful memory, how was I alone in that memory? How, how was, what happens if, if I'm actually surrounded and loved? This this is such a, this question I think has been birthed in me through my constellation work because of the incredible um, resource that ancestors become or that other kind of natural forces become. As we do constellation work, we become more and more aware of our resources and our supports. And I think that this lived experience in constellations of creating accompaniment and creating support lets me deepen into the neuroscience questions even more fully. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I love the word radical. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I would consider this radical work. Yes, I think it's a very radical work. Yeah, yeah, we have to get the word out more. And I understand you've written a book, or you're working on a book. Yes, no, I have a book that's that's going to be published just uh, two weeks before our conference. Um, hey. It's a book called Your Resonant Self, Guided Meditations and Exercises to Engage Your Brain's Capacity for Healing. And it is, um, it is not focused on constellations, but it's very helpful for constellation facilitators who are wanting to think about what's happening in the brain of the person that I'm sitting with. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a guided tour, really through the helpful concepts of neuroscience that let us understand what tools and skills we need to be able to turn toward ourselves. Ah, so you're going to have a suitcase of books at the conference, aren't you? I, I am. I'm going to have, I'm, it's published by Norton, which is really fun because they're such a great publisher and they'll send us a box of books <laughs> for, for sale at the conference. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Well, another question I have is, why do you think people should come to the conference? Oh, what an opportunity for exploration and connecting with others and getting to see the work of all different constellation facilitators. Um, one of my favorite uh, constellation facilitators is Elena Veselago, who is one of the best and most um, well-known constellation facilitators in Russia. And she is often a speaker at the conference. So voices like hers that you would have no opportunity to hear are, are available. I actually also uh, interpret for her when, uh, <laughs> when she comes to the conference. So <laughs> ah, I may be calling you because she's yes. on my list of people to interview. Oh. Oh, she speaks beautiful English, but yes. enjoys having a little support. I'm, I'm so glad that you're interviewing her because that means she'll be there. So these kinds of resources, and international resources, um, are uh, a very good reason. An amazing come. opportunity. Yes. An amazing absolutely. opportunity, yes. I was in Elena's workshop um, at the last conference in San oh. Diego, and it was stunning. Yes. Stunning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy calendar to meet with us today. Oh, Linda, and, what a pleasure. Oh, and I want to mention again that uh, you must read Sarah's uh, description. She's an awesome writer. <laughs> and you can go to our website at nasconstellations.org for more information. We hope you'll be joining us at the conference in Virginia Beach in October. Weather should be just perfect. And uh, you'll meet a stunning array of uh, very generous souls to share our knowledge and help each other. Thank you again, Sarah. I really appreciate your time. Mm, thank you, Linda. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.